In the early part of next year, NVIDIA will announce the RTX 40 Super Series of graphics cards. The CES announcement is going to be quite interesting for a number of reasons. The cards will offer about a 10% bump in performance if we compare the RTX 4080 versus the Super cards, but also well, it seems like anyway, a price cut, which is perhaps the most compelling thing of all. But for many of us, I think the most intriguing prospect will be new ranges of cards from both AMD and Intel. RDNA 4, as well as Battle Mage, will have roughly speaking the same time frame for release, but perhaps will also be the most compelling offerings because they will offer us new mid-range GPUs. Sure, these Halo products, which cost $1,500, $2,000 US dollars, are exciting and all, but not many of us want to take out a second mortgage to our home. So, as you probably guessed from the context of my discussion here, as well as the video title, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about both of those architectures and throw in some RDNA 5 stuff as well. There's a lot of stuff to get through, so, well, enough of my rambling, let's just get right into it. In the next couple of days, there'll be another video which will go much deeper into uh, NVIDIA's Blackwell architecture and give you some context into how it's going to perform and NVIDIA's plans versus RDNA 5. Now, if you did miss my recent video on Blackwell, I had recently provided some details concerning the configuration of one of the high-end SKUs as well as performance targets. Coppertite 7 Kimi has now confirmed the memory configuration of this, but in that next video, I'm going to give you guys a lot of additional updates because, well, I've been hearing quite a lot about it. And even if you're an in, in AMD fan, it may be worth it for you to check that video out because it's going to give a lot more context to RDNA 5. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get into the information. Well, after this message from the video sponsor, GT, for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So I'm going to start out with Intel's Battle Mage because it's going to be the fastest stuff to go through. I'm going to focus on the flagship part because I'm not quite so certain yet on how the other SKUs will fare. So early leaks I've been hearing, um, and I've been mentioning this for a while now, is that the performance of this GPU were touted to be up to around the RTX 4080, but it doesn't seem to be true for gaming necessarily, at least anymore. Now, I'm hearing that Battle Mage's compute results will probably be about the RTX 4080, give or take, but gaming it's probably going to be closer to let's say the 4070 Ti. Some games of course just simply scale differently based on game engine with resolution etc etc but it can be perhaps a little slower than the 4070 Ti down to around the 4070. Now at this point it's down to things like driver tweaks and other small software changes to perhaps improve things but we have seen Intel do wonders with, let's say, original Arc architecture, so it's very possible that uh, a little bit of additional performance can be squeezed out. As a quick refresher for the info that I've already released regarding the specifications, the number of execution units allegedly is 56. Um, there's a small caveat which we'll talk about in, a, in just a second. I've also heard clock frequencies of around 3 GHz for an early projection, but again, this is not final revision silicon at that point, so it's possible it didn't hit those targets or a little bit higher. This is all wrapped up with 256-bit GDDR6 memory. So about that caveat, I have a source that is still claiming that the total number of execution units is actually 64 and not 56, and it basically is just a little bit of confusion, but really it doesn't matter anyway because the performance targets are essentially identical. Um, the biggest hurdle that Intel are probably going to face though isn't so much the performance targets of the card, but it's going to be confidence of customers and the marketing of the GPUs. Alchemist has ended up to be pretty decent, especially against, let's say, the RTX 3060, etc, etc. But this is with a lot of time, driver updates, and some price cuts behind them. The original release was pretty rocky, especially with DirectX 9 titles, legacy games basically. So I am hearing Intel is a little nervous with the marketing of Battle Mage. Uh, here's the roadmap that I've leaked a couple of times at this point. There's no real changes to the release date of the cards. So yeah, we don't have too much longer to wait. I'm sure that uh, it won't be long until we get some really, really, really solid performance leaks from uh, Intel or something like that. Anyway. Now let's move on to RDNA 4. Before I get too much into the new information, I think it's important to give us some context. 
Um, so here's some specifications that I released originally back in September of this year, so that's 2023 if you're watching this in like six months time or something. Now hopefully you're looking at the screen because there are two configurations. So um, N48 as well as 44 seem to be the SKUs which are essentially, sorry, the uh, chips which essentially are going to be powering RDNA4. So 32 workgroup processors and 48 megabytes of infinity cache. 192-bit GDDR7, whereas there's also N44, which is 20 workgroup processors. The amount of Infinity Cache has been shaved down to just 32 um, megabytes, and of course, you can also see the bus width has also seen a snip as well. Now, what isn't 100% clear is which configuration is going to be used, because I've been hearing some mixed information. I believe it's more likely to be the 192-bit. I've spoken to a couple of sources about this, and they simply, one of them who's got really good info, has simply told me that 128-bit is not correct. But I can't get 100% solid information regarding the specification of the memory, but the number of workgroup processors is essentially locked in. But what I can tell you guys is that RDNA 4's highest end parts, as we've spoken about 100 times at this point, such as N40 as well as 41 are dead. Um, so what this basically means is that RDNA 4 and the Radeon RX 8000 series are going to be quite intriguing. So RDNA 4's parts themselves are going to be uh, essentially a, a refresh for the mid-range. They're going to be monolithic dies, they're going to be pretty small, easy to produce, and they're going to offer performance for 1440p or perhaps entry-level 4k. Now some newer information I've been given regarding the performance targets because older info said that it was going to be between N32 and 31 I'm now told essentially you can look at most benchmarks and just that um, have the 7900 GRE or GRE if you prefer uh, and then you could basically just mentally substitute that for the flagship N48 part. So this means it's going to slightly outperform N32 based GPUs like the 7800 XT, but it's going to get spanked by, let's say, the 7900 XTX. This is, however, with the caveat of ray tracing being disabled. So ray tracing is beefed up a little bit. Um, I've leaked previously that the performance was still going to be behind the equivalent NVIDIA GPU, um, and that, of course, would be lovely space. We're not referring to Blackwell here. But now I can tell you that I'm being told it's around 10 to 20%. Now, it's possible that additional software optimization from drivers, games, etc., would allow for slightly higher performance for both ray tracing and raster, particularly ray tracing. But yeah, I wouldn't be super, super, super excited about RDNA 4's ray tracing performance. It's going to be a nice tangible increase, but it's certainly not going to be, you know, um, running games at like 4K with path tracing at like, you know, 120 frames a second native or anything like that, which I don't think anyone expected anyway. Power consumption figures will also um, be uh, seeing a reduction, and the card is going to run cooler. As I said, it's going to be small, die, cheap to produce, and this means, of course, great things in terms of power draw, excellent for small form factor systems, etc., etc., etc. I don't have an exact pricing, but I think at absolute max, we're looking at like 500 bucks based on the context that I've been um, given. I think it's probable it could even be cheaper than that. Um, but I have got some overall plans for AMD. So what it seems like is that there are going to be kind of mixed GPUs or mixed architecture, should I say, in the RX um, 8000 series. So you can see on screen that the 8800 is based on N31. Again, N31 will still, technically speaking, be the highest performance uh, GPUs. And I was told that we're going to see some type of refresh now, I don't think this is going to mean additional compute units, maybe a slightly improved clock frequencies or improved memory speeds or something like that. I haven't got anything specific. I was just told that the 8800 series is going to be an N31 refresh and specifications aren't going to be too dissimilar to what we already have. Then 8700, that's going to be based, of course, on N48. And of course, there's going to be probably a couple of cards in that series. Uh, this is just an example, but there could be like an XT and an XTX or an 8700 and an XT. And then, of course, we're going to get 8600, which is based on N44. 
You can also see on screen um, a list of some of the points that I've made in the video. I'm not going to repeat them because I've already spoken about them verbally. But what about RDNA 5? So RDNA 5 is going to launch in the latter part of 2025. I've heard roughly six quarters is going to separate RDNA 4 and RDNA 5, but of course release timings could change just a little bit here or there. Now, these GPUs will mark um, AMD's entry back into Halo parts. Now, it, perhaps it's a little bit disappointing for some people to hear that we have to wait for so long for AMD to compete in the, you know, Halo tiers, but AMD and, of course, GeForce both push higher volumes in the mid-range anyway. So this is going to basically mean that AMD are going to be able to hopefully get some cash. It means that they're going to have more time to sort RDNA 5 out. It also means that we're going to see better software, etc, etc, etc. This means, though, that, of course, NVIDIA are going to have the market to itself in the high end until RDNA 5 launches. But it does mean that there's going to be some downward pressure in the mid-range. So RDNA 5, I have leaked some early specifications before, but now I'm hearing that there's going to be some simplifications potentially happening, and there is potentially some rethinking of the specifications. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, because I've only heard it from a single source, but what I am hearing is that ray tracing, again, is going to see a decent uptick. It's probably going to be closer to the RTX 40 series, maybe a little bit better, but Lovelace, of course, well, at that point, <laughs> you know, it's not like Lovelace is not going to be replaced. We know Blackwell is going to happen. And Blackwell, of course, is going to be outperform RDNA 5 when it comes to uh, ray tracing, almost certainly. And this is simply because NVIDIA just, well, they just dedicate more die space and silicon towards ray tracing. Now, our sources also told me that AMD, though, will have closer to feature parity, for example, opacity micro meshes. I've only uh, received this information from a single source, so do take it with a pinch of salt or a couple of pinches. But logically speaking, if we go back to the leaked Xbox slide, um, you may see a number of elements here, and uh, you can see that at that point anyway, they were considering RDNA 5 for the IP. And again, some of those features that NVIDIA have uh, in, uh, added into RTX 40, basically, um, Microsoft are listing for its console. Now, Phil Spencer has said that some of the plans have changed, and they have also stated that there's possibly going to be some customization to the GPU. I've actually heard that the SOC design for the Xbox is already somewhat underway. Um, however, potentially it's going to be using Zen 5 rather than Zen 6, so I'm not 100% certain, but I do think that um, closer to feature parity is almost certain. Also, some of the specifications I've received are pretty varied for RDNA 5, um, so it's quite difficult to know exactly how well it's going to perform in terms of performance. Um, however, I do think that it's very, very likely to be over double that of RDNA 3. I mean, honestly, if it isn't, that would be extremely disappointing in raster performance, because ultimately AMD, you can say, are skipping a generation of high-end products. And this product is not going to launch until the second half of 2025. So again, given all of the rumors for RDNA 5, the fact that it's apparently going to be MCM, which is one of the reasons that RDNA 4, of course, the high-end GPUs got essentially canned because they just couldn't get the MCM working correctly. So they basically delayed it all for RDNA 5. Um, so I don't think it's unreasonable for them to have that 2x performance target. I've heard it's actually over that, but um, I've heard such a variety of different performance numbers, it's very difficult to know what is raster versus what is T-flops. Because as you know, you can have like, um, you know, a T-flop figure which doesn't even slightly match up to the raster performance, let alone ray tracing performance. So there you have it guys, RDNA 4, as well as some 5 stuff, plus Battle Mage. I do really hope that Intel does a pretty good job with Battle Mage because, quite frankly, I think this duopoly that we've been dealing with in the, well, GPU market has just not been great for us as customers. 
Several Intel cards are actually quite compelling at the moment, but obviously the, well, somewhat botched launch didn't really do Intel any favors. Now in the next couple of days, day or two after this video goes live, I will also be uploading a much more extensive look at RTX 50. I've got a bunch of specifications, some new updates to the architecture and a bunch of other stuff as well. Um, I was going to put it in this video and just make it a ridiculously lengthy video, but uh, I'm still somewhat working on the script. I'm actually going to be recording the camera section straight after this one, so I'm going to be wearing the same clothing. But uh, yeah, um, as I said, the script and stuff has been worked on at different times, so yeah. Um, Blackwell is going to be really cool, and if you are not that interested in NVIDIA stuff, I would still suggest you check that video out because I'm also going to be talking more about RDNA 5 in that video uh, because it's basically I kind of need to talk about both architectures and give some context because it's going to be very interesting to see what the response is between the two companies. With that said, I think that's just about it for this video. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.